But what were you doing as a teenager? My next guest as a teenager fought a war. It's really incredible stuff. And over 70 years after the war, he's still strong, alive, and really sharp. We are thankful that he's here to share some of these amazing stories with us. Please welcome World War II veteran and just an all-round jolly good fellow and a good friend of mine, Private Joseph Niashite. Come on, this other program. Good morning to you. Good morning. It, uh, so now we are bringing our friendship to the stage now <laughs> to talk about things. You look very well. Let me ask you how you are feeling after working for seven days. Terrific. You feel terrific? Terrific. You think you have more gas to go I'm another as week? I'm strong as a fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's good to hear. Tell us about being a, a teenager going to war. I mean, many of us as teenagers are just home being protected by our parents. There, How was it being a teenager oh, at war? Okay, there is one secret. Yeah. People seem to realize it. Mm -hmm. When you are young, mm -hmm. you don't know fear. Okay. When you start growing before you know that there is something called fear. Mm -hmm. I was then 18 years when I went to the war, mm -hmm. 1943. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was fearless. So when we went to the war, our elders that went before us, mm -hmm. when they saw us, some of them wept because they said, well, we have left you, the young ones, to take over from us when we die. But now they have brought all of, all of you mm -hmm. to fight in the war. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when we climb the mountain, mm -hmm. you know our haversack, the pack. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we were not as strong as us. So mm -hmm. sometimes we used to take that habitat, add it to our... To yours? Yes, to climb the hill. Wow. You That's see? really incredible. So this is, this is the way, if you are a young man, mm. and this is the difference. Mm. Old people are old people. And, and but <laughs> up till now, I feel some sort of energy in me still, you, you feel at the if, age if of 95. You feel very young, eh? Very young. Oh. See, there mm. is one secret. Okay. If you, you think you are, you are old, mm. you will be old. Okay. Always, if it's in your mind that mm. you are young, mm. you will be young. So it's in your mind that you are young? Oh, young. Yeah. I That's refuse to be old. <laughs> Really, really incredible. So the war ends in 45. You come back home yeah. and during the year 1948 in, in February, yeah, yeah. you and Ajayate. the sergeant Ajete, Private Atipo, and Odate Lamte, and Odate Lamte you, are, you, are, you are marching to, to uh, the castle. And you are the only survivor during this exactly. march. Tell me about this march and how come you're the only one who survived it. Thank you. It's a nice question. Mm. You see, when the war ended, we were the first to arrive in the country at Takradi, December 1945. You came by ship? By ship. Okay. HMS Royce. Okay. We, we went by HMS Secasia, mm. but we came back by HMS Royce. You landed in Takradi? Yeah, Takradi. And mm. what happened? Uh, they made three military bands. Okay. And all the chiefs from all parts of Gokos, mm. by then Gokos, yeah. from the north, south, east, and west, everybody converged at the harbor okay. to welcome us. Mm. They were very happy that we returned safely, but mm. we left a lot of our men back in Burma, mm. India. Actually, the war started from India. If I want to tell you the whole truth, you know, the Japanese conquered all the islands around Burma, mm -hmm. and then they invaded Burma. And that's where you were fighting? They invaded Burma and chased the British and their troops all mm -hmm. into India. They followed them, the Japanese, mm -hmm. and they captured at the border, mm -hmm. called Chiringa. They captured some of the towns there. Mm -hmm. and we, we went to India to... Um, divisions. We had the 81st Division mm. commanded by General Wuna mm. and then the other one, 82nd Division commanded by General Stockwell. Mm. I belong to the 82nd Division. Okay. You know our troops are still using the insignia. Okay. When you see a spider on the shoulder of one of our troops here, okay. it means 
81st division. Mm -hmm. But two cross pier and a yellow patch okay. is 82nd division. That's where you belong to. Yeah, I belong to 82nd mm -hmm. division. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was a mechanic. You are a mechanic? I yes, I come from a, a, a tight advanced base workshop. Mm. And you know, we were seconded to go to the war to repair the American jeeps at the jungle. Okay. So ten, 10 of us were selected. I, Joseph Hammond, okay. E.B. Okine, okay. Granton, Crenshaw, Amonu, and then Anoba, and then uh, um, A.B. Mensa, okay. Anefi, and then uh, Lomoti. This group, 10 of us, we were drafted to go. That's to amazing. It's, it's, a, it's amazing how you remember the names of, <laughs> of people you were even drafted with. So what was the real reason you and your, your colleagues were marching to? Thank you. To, to the we were promised heaven. You were promised heaven? Honestly. After the war? Yes. By the commander-in-chief of all the troops, the commander-in-chief was General Slim. He promised our troops that uh, when we return home, mm. they will increase our pay, they make our condition very, very nice and so on. But 46, when we were discharged, mm. the camp at Takradi, it was called Arakan Barracks. We stayed there at Takradi. Mm. And by then, the governor of the Gokos was uh, Alan Benz. Alan Benz, yeah. The governor came to say hello and then congratulated us. When he reached me, I was so young, mm -hmm. so he patted my head. <laughs> he, then he patted said, your head, eh? He said, my son, <laughs> I'm very proud of you. Uh, you are brave. So you went to the war to defend the British Empire and the Gokus. I yeah. said, yes, sir. And I was extremely happy uh, for a governor to shake hands with me. Yeah. Congratulated me. Uh, and then 46, we were all discharged. Before we were discharged, they asked everybody mm -hmm. whether we would like to defer, okay. to still stay in the army. Mm -hmm. But the sorrow, suffering, and the calamity mm -hmm. that we passed through mm -hmm. during the war, we all decided to go back to civil life. Okay. Yeah. So the promise from 46 mm -hmm. to 48, we waited patiently. And some of our soldiers used to beg in the street. Really? Condition was so deplorable. After the war? Yes. Soldiers were begging in the streets? Yes. No job, nothing. That Then we, we plan, comprehensive planning that, well, if you don't ask, they won't give you. So we will go. So that's, that's so, why you marched? Well, yeah, we fixed the date. OK. That fateful day, 28th February, February yeah. at the Nkrumah Museum. We started 8.30 in the morning. Okay. March, we were 210 soldiers. Then we started walking, singing. You know, soldiers always, when we march, we sing. You remember one of the songs? <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> Bremae, Bremae. Okay. Bremae, Bremae. Brema East Africa, Brema Bessin Yanko. Brema East Africa, Brema Bessin Yanko. So, this was what you, you yeah, were marching to the, the, the castle. Say, Boma, we change it. Okay. Yeah, right. Like this. It went right. Yeah. When we arrived okay. at the crossroads, okay. we met policemen. Okay. They were uneducated. Those days. We called them Gentu. Gentu. Yes. It's an uneducated our police. Our okay. language. Uneducated people. Mm -hmm. They used to put their parties around their leg. Mm. And the officer, one officer in charge of them was Superintendent Emery. Emery. Okay. When they intercepted the veterans, mm. they said, we won't allow you to go to the castle. We said, oh, why? After all, uh, it's only a petition. Mm. Sajajete was co uh, holding our petition. Mm. And then we want to see the governor. Even if the government secretary 
receive him. We, don't, we have no problem. You just wanted to go there? Exactly. Okay. But this Superintendent Emily was highly impervious to reason. We spoke, 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 but he refused. Okay, we, 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 we pleaded with him to allow us to take 10 men mm. and then go to, to the castle to present our position. Still, he continued. He was impervious to reason. We were compelled to scale down the number from 10 to 5. To go into the castle? Exactly. He still said no? He's still adamant. He was still adamant. Instead of negotiating with us, he asked one of his sergeants. Later, we learned the man's name was Chokosi, Sergeant Chokosi. Mm -hmm. He asked the man to shoot. We were surprised because we were all on down. He said, shoot. He gave the man order three times to shoot. But the man didn't do it. Okay. He, was, he, he didn't shoot. He gave him the order. He was, the man was highly uh, uh, peeved. Emery was highly peeved, the white man, mm -hmm. white officer. Yeah. He was so much annoyed that he grabbed the gun from uh, uh, Chokosi. Mm -hmm. And then the first man that he shot was Sodati Lampi at the front line. Okay. I was then seven feet around, approximately seven feet around Okay. the second line. Oh, you were so, in the second line? Yeah, I was okay. in the second line. So when he shot Udati Lampi, I saw a tipo because I saw everything where I was standing. Yeah. He moved forward and made so, oh, as if a her. Yeah. We are unarmed. We have no gun. No okay. knife, nothing, even pen knife. Why should you shoot him? I says, I saw it. he made so. Mm -hmm. Then he shot him also. Boo -boo, boo -boo. Really? So when he shot a tipo, mm -hmm. Patrick a tipo, mm -hmm. then Sajadite was highly annoyed. Mm -hmm. So he, I saw him move forward. But before that, mm -hmm. I saw Superintendent Emery when he, I said, I, I, Sajadite started moving. Mm -hmm. Then he raised the gun. Mm -hmm. If that bullet had missed Ajiti, it mm -hmm. would have landed on me. Because you were directly behind Directly him. behind him. But I was fortunate. Maybe God preserved my life to let me tell the nation exactly what happened. Uh, exactly. I was there. Mm. So Ajiti and fell in then, front of you? Then Is that he, it? To grab him, he shot him. Boop, 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 boop. He fell. When Ajiti fell, there was actually total confusion there. Before my eyes, I saw all, all of my colleagues down. Mm. There was total confusion. Mm. Few of our people went to Otusha, Otusha Township, mm -hmm. about 20% of them. Mm -hmm. We were 210. And then the 80% we went to Accra. We all started running, some running. Okay, so you started running? Some running to towards Accra. Okay. And then when we arrived at the post office, olden days, in front of the post office, there was a runabout there. Mm -hmm. So, any white man that we saw in a car, we, we would just stop the car, mm -hmm. drag him out, we won't kill him, throw him, mm -hmm. turn the car upside down, and put fire inside. Mm -hmm. 48. So, this was, so this, this was, was out of anger. How the thing started. Okay. How the thing started. Mm -hmm. Now, the population of the Gokos, when they heard it, that they have massacred their sons, mm -hmm. we just returned from the war. Mm -hmm. Instead of compensating them, mm -hmm. they have massacred them. The population of the Gokos, they were so annoyed, then they also attacked the, uh, the white stores. They started looting. Okay. There were a lot of killing because the, the police prevented them from looting. But they insisted. They continue fire, put fire in UAC, UTC, Jeep Oliver, everywhere. Mm. Woody and Steve is everywhere, all the white stores. Then, when this thing started, actually, Superintendent Emery brought an avalanche of trouble to the Gokos. A peaceful nation. That was the first time. It was beyond everybody's comprehension. The rap was so much so that they brought in the Nigerian troops. 
to quell the row, but they failed. Wow. It was too much. And you know, the worst of all, when this thing happened, when we were discharged, 46, mm. some of our colleagues went to Kumasi and Kofodra and so forth. Mm. They were these three young men. Mm -hmm. They went there. So when they heard that this thing, they have massacred their people their in Accra. Colli colleagues in Accra. Okay. Ah, the row started in Kumasi. Oh. Started in Kofodra. It spread. Oh, okay. Our colleagues there too started their own thing. Just in solidarity. Yes. That's our yes. That's they started their own thing. Those are some great stories. It was terrible. Many people died. Mm. And then, for three weeks, day and night, killing, burning stores. For it three weeks? Everybody's comprehension. I tell you, mm. no route like this has ex ever existed in mm. our country. Mm. From Gokos to Ghana. I'm telling you. Well, many years later. For about. three weeks, it continued until when it, it was it subsided. Okay. The row subsided a okay. little. Mm. King George the Sixth, this Queen's father, okay. was then the king. Mm. They sent a delegation under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. Watson from Britain mm. to look into the cause, cause why Sajanjiti group we were killed oh, okay. and other things. Mm. When they arrived, they looked carefully into it and then they realized that Ghana Gokos by then, we have progressed too much than our constitution. Okay. So they changed the constitution. And by changing the constitution, by killing us also, then it paved the way for political distance. And oh, okay. Yes. And so there was election, 1951, and Prabhu Nkrumah actually won the election. That's, that's incredible. Yes, and we were the first to pave the way for Ghana's independence. We that, sacrificed. That particular riot. Yes, yeah. I want to ask you one thing. If there is a bell mm -hmm. and you have not used iron or any stick to touch the bell, would there be any sound? No, oh, there won't be. Exactly. So if nothing happened, there won't be any independence at that time. That's because true. we were killed. Mm -hmm. And I heard President Mills read in public that killing of Sajan Jeti group paved the way for Ghana's independence. President Mahama too said it. We paved let, the way let, for Ghana's Let's talk Ghana's about some other, other fun stuff now. Uh, was it last year you went to meet the royal family? Uh, I was given an award, 2018, Guba Award. 2018, yes. For Second, second World War. Yeah. Through the British for, for defending the crown. You are British. Who, who was your favorite uh, uh, royal family member to meet? And uh, actually, Prince Harry. Oh, yeah, you like he, Harry? He, yeah, he also been a soldier. Mm -hmm. He went to Afghanistan. Okay. And we had a lengthy chat about mm -hmm. that. He asked me my division, my unit, and everything. Okay. Do, do, you, do you surprise yourself? Do you look in the mirror and say, I'm 95 years old. How am I this agile? Do you, Thank you. Do you sometimes ask Very yourself? good question. Because I always refuse to be old. <laughs> I consider myself young, always. 95 years old. Yes. 75 I, years after the war. So if you you're call here me having a man, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Private <laughs> Joseph Ni Ashite Hamad. Really, really incredible speaking to you on, uh, on the TV. Now, I'll, I'll come see you later today also. We'll continue Thank the talk. Much. Thank you so much for always, uh, always being uh, such a, an amazing human who makes us laugh so much. Please. Okay. May the almighty God mm. let you cross the hundred line yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. I really appreciate that. So when I'm about 95, I remember that. Pave Hammond told me now cross the hundred line. <laughs> we wait for you to cross the hundred line. We'll do a, we'll do a big party for you too. Thank you. That's for sure. I know the Lord will do it. For By me. all means. Amen. <laughs> Thank Amen. you very much.